Hey, it's Keith from Outlaw Speed Shop, and this is the Devil's Details Diecast Tiki Challenge. What you're looking at right now is a bunch of components that we both received from Bearcat 3D Design, and it's up to us to do something with it. I'm going to use this as my base vehicle, and with this... I'm going to try to make some sort of a chassis and trailer set up out of this matchbox set that has no use except for gas lamps. <laughs> um, so that's that's kind of the mission of this video, and hopefully um, we see what each other comes up with. That's kind of the goal, and I think we're both up for the challenge. I've actually seen his, so if you like your content, make sure you subscribe and don't forget to ring the bell. So obviously the first step is to uh, completely destroy all the bases and do whatever you need to do to get these cars apart. Uh, there's not much I'm salvaging insofar as the base stuff goes. To a degree, I'm going to reuse the bottom of the matchbox um, castings in at least one full one and then half of another. But for the Hot Wheels, I'm not using anything out of the actual base itself. And since it's gas lands, I usually end up gluing the bases because nothing ends up fitting the way it's supposed to because it's all a mix match of parts. So um, I'm obviously not being super careful. Um, the only thing I'm trying to be careful of is to not drill my hand out. And yes, I know I should use a vice. And yes, I do own multiple. I just don't like using them. Um, just I like feeling the control and the feel of the tip through my finger. So <laughs> obviously you can kind of see what I got there. I got the... The bed glued on one of the bases, but obviously because of the length, I need um, some wheels in the back. So I'm going to cut the other matchbox casting in half with my handy dandy Dremel tool, which I use pretty much for every project. Um, it's probably my most valuable tool. Well, you know what I mean. <laughs> but anyway, so what I did is to strengthen it up a little bit, I put some styrene I-beams and then I made a piece of uh, styrene tubing into a drive shaft so after stripping the vehicle which I don't always strip on gas lands but on this one I wanted to try some different painting stuff so I stripped it with the citrus strip it sat in overnight but it was pretty much ready in you know an hour or so um, I always try to use my wire brush and then I'll use like a um, scotch bright just to get all the residue in any leftover paint that is in the nooks and crannies out um, that is a, a killer when you're trying to paint and uh, just ends up looking like crap. So that's that's a big thing is to make sure it's, it's as clean as possible if you're going to do any kind of painting. Um, again, it's it's Gaslands, Wastelands, post-apocalyptic style. I mean, it's not doesn't have to be perfect by any way, shape, or form. And sometimes the rougher, the better. But in this case, because, again, I want to try something a little bit different, I decided to at least start with a fresh clean base so I knew what I had to work with for future projects um, that maybe not are Gaslands or Wastelands related. So so what I'm trying to do here is find a way to get this to fit. Now the, the trailer was 3D printed and designed, um, you know, obviously a specific way and all to certain specs and I'm kind of throwing that out the window to a degree because the casting of the Hot Wheels actually overhangs a little bit so it just means I got to modify what they sent me just a little bit because um, it pushes the um, what do you call it back the, the concession stand back a little bit so it's not sitting flush so but that's again that's a minor thing that's an expected um, occurrence when you're dealing with these types of builds so here it's it's more I'm just trying to figure out how I'm going to make it fit um, and what I want to remove, because you end up removing a lot. 
um, on these builds at times. So here I decide I'm going to cut the front bumper off and I'll end up cutting the rear bumper off as well. Um, just because the, the, the casting it's going on the base, it actually has a, a front ram. So having the grill, I mean, excuse me, having the bumper and the ram just seemed kind of, kind of silly. And plus the bumper just made it sit up that little bit more. So it didn't sit as flush as I wanted it to. So I thought by cutting it off, it would look a lot, a lot cleaner and um, it'll fit, it fits a lot better as well. So, so here you can see I'm cutting off the back. And again, you, you know, the, the good part about these builds is just, you know, cut, cut away, do what you want to do. You know, there's no, there's no rhyme or reason or rules that you have to follow. Um, that's hard and fast that you have to really worry about, you know, how things are going to go because you're making this fit, you know. So the other thing, because it did sit up a little higher than I want, um, the way these uh, rear wheel well openings go, um, it just made it sit a little higher. So since I get rid of the back bumper, I'm going to flatten out the, the um, wheel arches in the back. So that way it sits a little bit lower and it's got more of a surface area for me to actually um, glue to so that it sticks in there really well. So again, that's kind of know if that translates as well to video as it does um, to how I did it. But so now it's a matter I'm going to start looking for pieces, parts to stick on here. The engine on this is in the back. So I've got some um, 3D printed exhausts that I'm going to, I believe I got those from Camsel Designs. I'm going to stick those on there. So that way, I don't know, it just adds a little bit of toughness to it. I wish they were a little bit bigger and I should have made them. I, I haven't gotten good at making exhaust yet. Um, I've got tubing benders and all that other stuff. Um, but trying to make consistent pieces um, is tough. So, you know, I can make one. <laughs> but I've been trying to, trying to make them all look semi-consistent, especially even on these types of builds. It's, it's really hard. So um, I'm working on it. i got a couple things coming that might help. So. I'm going to be doing a lot more with sheet metal and metal and um, aluminum and stuff in future builds. So I've got I've got all the tooling at work. I just, you know, it's just one of those things that I don't end up doing. So here I'm just making some side panels out of styrene, you know, uh, blast shields, if you if you will. Not going crazy. I'm just gluing crap on. So now it's time to hit the trailer. So I'm going to take the concession, I'm going to call it a concession stand because I don't know what else to, to call it. I'm going to glue that on, and that way I can see where the rails are going to fit. Because remember, the ca um, the rear of the Hot Wheels casting of the, the wagon overhangs. So that's a, obviously going to truncate everything else that I'm doing insofar as what they 3D printed me. So, But it all worked out good. Make sure you check those guys out. That's Bearcat uh, 3D Designs. I'll, if I remember, I'll put a link in my uh, video description. So it was only off by one rung. So I'm going to just, I just used my scissors there to cut it. And what it is, is on the back of the trailer is some steps. They step down or step up. I guess it depends on which way you're going. Um, so that, you know, people can come in and buy their wastelandish tiki beverages or whatever it is that they're going to get. So when I moved the stand back, obviously the railing overhung the step. So I just cut it back one rung and I'm just going to glue them down. And then I'm, I'm going to make a roof for the actual stand itself. Um, I had all kinds of delusions of grandeur <laughs> of what I was going to do with that. Uh, but I ended up just putting a flat piece because um, time is my enemy on this and two other projects I have to get out for the same day. And my, um, innate ability to totally lose track of days and time and I'm always rushing so I'm um, just using a piece of flat styrene it's it looks like it's siding it's got some slots in it so it's got a little bit of texture to it um, originally I was gonna make like this grass roof and everything else but again time is my enemy here I'm just kind of unevening it if that's such a thing I'm um, just making it not look so square so that it looks like it was just something thrown on so after putting everything pretty much in um, chaos black, except for the actual body, which I just primed gray and I threw some bits on it. I'm going to try my air. I usually use this stuff right out onto um, a regular brush and I brush it on. This is the Vallejo rust system for an airbrush. And it's designed to put them on one at a time 
in layers. So I did two, I'm gonna show you two at a time. So this is the first two layers, which is like dark rust and rust. Then there's like, there's like six different ones, but you just put them on in layers and in different areas so that it's not all consistent. Then when you're done, you can take this chipping medium and you brush it on wherever you want the rust to eventually be exposed. So imagine, you know, I get the different shadings of, of, of rust here. Now I want to put this chipping medium on and then I'm going to paint over everything and then I can chip away the chipping medium to reveal the rust underneath. So essentially what you're looking at right now is like a primer coat. I'm going to paint over all of that. So after it dries, you can see it's kind of shiny, but now I'm just going to take, um, I'm also going to try the Vallejo. I haven't tried these yet. Um, airbrush paints, kind of hemming and hawing, but I want to decide, you know, Tiki, um, I thought green was a good color for everything. So I painted it green and now I just use a little bit of water on a very stiff brush and I can brush away the, the chipping medium to reveal the rust underneath. So it's taking the paint off of it and uh, it worked really well. I'm real happy with it. I know guys have been doing it forever. Danny over Danny's Diecast Disaster is like a, a Michelangelo of rust. Um, so if you need tutorials, don't follow me. <clears throat> Excuse me, follow him because he's, uh, he's amazing. <clears throat> Excuse me. But uh, this does work well. Um, I'm real happy with with the way it with the way it came out and the effect that it gave me. I definitely like. Um, I think it's got more of a patina look, which I'm kind of digging. So I think I'm going to do that maybe on a couple hot rod or um, muscle car builds coming up. So after all that's done, um, actually my video is kind of screwed up here. Um, a little bit out of order, but um, I wanted to, oh, that's what it is. I wanted to show you guys. I just take a little bit of a sponge off one of those foam poly brushes. In the last step, you just kind of tap it on there a little bit, and it really makes a nice, nice effect, almost like a chipping effect. So, and the rest is just details. You know, it's it's one of those things I can't tell you how to do it. Um, I'm just using my combination of the Vallejo Model Master. Um, uh, citadel paints just to spruce things up here i'm using lead belcher which i use a ton of on this build um i'm going to say it probably three maybe four more times <laughs> but um i just like the aluminum look so i'm doing the exhaust um and I, doing this one was a little bit of a challenge because i had to think about how i wanted to put this all together so that i could paint it and still get the details and i didn't want to assemble the whole damn thing because it's so big <clears throat> So if you notice, I did the same thing on the on the trailer with the rust. Now I'm dry brushing that same green on, and I'm also dry brushing some some bronze, just to give a little bit of, of, of depth and texture. Now I'm taking my Agrath Earth Shade. I'm gonna darken the areas where people would be walking or where it would be getting a lot of dirt and grime and grunge from excess use. So again, there's a lot of different things you can do on this right here is the rise of rust and normally if you guys watch me i use typhus corrosion and then i put the rise of rush rust as a dry brush over it um talking to colin over at the gaslands uk page he said try it as a slurry and mix it with some water and get a really thin consistency you know kind of give you that rust streak look so that's kind of what i'm doing right here and i gotta say spot on thank you this worked awesome i really like um this is a change uh it goes on bright, but it dries. Um, it dries a nice rust shade, depending upon how heavy you put it on and how what your mixture is and all that crap. You know, you'll you'll see once you start doing it if you decide to go this route. But I really really like it, and what it does is it just gave me a little bit more flexibility. Um, and a lot of times you want to get like a, a a rust streak, and dry brushing works. But sometimes um, I can see how this would be much much easier to try to get that effect of rust you know heavy rust in one area dripping down a surface that hasn't quite come through yet um so this is really a great tip and hopefully you guys you know find it as awesome as i did i know it's little paints but i did find it awesome that shows you how uh, pathetic my life is but anyways um i you know i did some underneath i did some on top um I'm just I'm just hitting areas where I think, you know, would rust or would be at that stage where it's starting to rust a little heavier than maybe the rest of the rest of the project. 
And when it comes to painting, it's all about layers. Um, and when you're painting this type of thing, uh, wastelands, post-apocalyptic stuff, um, you really can't screw it up. Uh, I mean, I suppose you could, but you can always fix it. You can go back over things and, and, and just redo stuff or add to it or subtract from it. It's, it's, you know, don't be afraid to try. This is where you want to try stuff, you know, and if it works great, if it doesn't, it's not a big deal. You can hide it with some mud or something. It's, you know, rub some dirt on it. So here I'm using the Zandri dust, which is a Citadel color. And I'm just using that for as a dry brush to uh, hit all the wheels and all the spots that I think would get a lot of sand and, and you know, sand get kicked up on stuff. And it, it, again, everybody's got their own way of doing it. I happen to like the Zandri dust. Uh, I'm sure there's other methods of doing it. But to me, it, it gives a nice, um, it's not overpowering, I guess you could say. I mean, depends on how heavy you put it on, obviously, but... Again, it's about textures and layers. So you got rust and paint and then some more rust. And then you get the, the sand and maybe you put a little bit of mud on there. So it it's all subtle, but it all adds up to what the finished product is going to look like. And I think that that's one of the more important things to consider when you're doing these is, you know, building up layers and trying to make sure that as you do this, you know, you can step back and look at it and yeah, that looks good. Or no, that looks like shit. I'm going to try this. It's, it's all baby steps. You know, here I'm taking some more lead bolt belcher and I'm dry brushing the edges of metal. And what that does, it just gives it a little bit of a shine. Like it's kind of worn out. Um, you know, I'm hitting the, the side moldings and I'm hitting the, the armor around the windows. Um, you know, all those types of things just, Again, layers, and yeah, you. I suppose you could overdo it. Um, the hardest part about these projects is when to walk away. You know, how much is too much? You know, you've put the kitchen sink on there. Maybe it's time to stop, you know? Um, there's a good look at the, or semi-good look at the actual front. That was part of the Matchbox casting, so I thought it looked really cool. So I needed something for the back, so I painted some drums, oil drums, um, the chaos black and I'm going back to that rise of rust effect on you know this is like the um, the tiki juice that would be served out of a rusty can that's been you know sitting around forever so uh, I'm hitting the both lids you know top and bottom and then the, the center section as well and then I'm just kind of where rust would run down so again I, I really dig the 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 rise of rust slurry so i was kind of contemplating what the hell else can i put on this thing um i didn't want you know this is where that overkill thing comes in um i'm like all right well how about some armor on the side so i'm going through my i never throw any pieces of styrene away obviously <laughs> um so i'm just looking for various cuts and sizes granted i can cut my own but i'm just looking for things that are gonna fit on the side but you know look like it was just thrown on there and welded um you can also see I wrote Tiki on the door. Um, I used a paint pen for that. Nothing, nothing fancy. I just wanted it to tie in the build. You can see those cans um, right there on the back. I ended up gluing those down. Kind of blends in a little too much. I probably could have gone with a brighter color for the cans and then ad added the rust. Um, hindsight's 2020, but hey, um, live and learn. So I'm going to go paint those, those pieces black and glue those on. And then once again, um, I'm just going to use the Rise of Rust over the black um, armor just to kind of show the wear on it as well. And you can kind of get a good look when you dry brush how it kind of makes the, you know, brings the highlights out. And that's kind of what you're after with this. Um, but again, I, I had a I love this project. Um, I just thought the challenge when J me and Jamie were kind of going back and forth over at Devil's De Details and he brought it up. Um, he said, we kind of we batted a few ideas back and forth and uh when he said the, the tiki thing i was like yeah that's that's the one it's completely different i added some chain i took some makeup cha uh, makeup chain some necklace chain the smallest stuff i could find at michael's i glued that in uh, little piles in the back and now i'm just using the agrath earth shade to add a little shading around underneath the the outside edges of those in the barrels just to add a little bit of depth and to make it kind of stand out a little bit more same thing with the turret on the front and the uh, the light bar is also a Camsel Designs. 
Um, it was a little too big for a project that I was working on, which was the Cannonball Run uh, Firebird. Um, it just was way too big. So I had already done it, and I just figured I'd glue it on this because, I don't know, it was just something to glue on there, I guess. <laughs> but here I'm just using, you know, just hitting different things, um, using the little bit of Typhus Corrosion just to add a little, which is a texture paint. So I'm just adding a little texture. Um, again, it's all subtle stuff. It probably seems like a lot because I'm going through it real fast. But um, overall, it wasn't, wasn't all that bad. This is what I ended up with. Um, I know I saw, I've seen uh, some rough shots of, of Jamie's. I know it's going to be killer. Um, I know he's got a few surprises in there. I can't wait to see. Um, you can see I put a little screen in there. So, um, you, you know, when you throw your tiki glass at the bartender, um, he has some protection. Other than that, um, I hope you guys like this. I got a few pictures here after the videos. Uh, make sure you go over and check out Jamie's at Devil Details Diecast. I will have the link in the description down below. Um, thank you for watching, and I will catch you on the next one.